Well, there you have it. Horse with no name. What do you think, Jim? <laughs> well, my version, I think, is very, very different from the reality of it. And that's the beauty of lyrics and song, I think, because we were talking about what its references were in society and it being banned and et cetera. But I spent my life as a child on the back of a horse. And I had a little white transistor radio and batteries were there. It was a D-cell battery and they were very, <laughs> very expensive then. Mm -hmm. And so I'd be on the ranch riding or sitting on an irrigation ditch or something. But mostly I really remember being on this big Palomino horse riding cows and I'd pull out my transistor radio and uh, play some music when I could. And this song had so much meaning to me because that horse was my best friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm riding, you know, in the badlands of Wyoming, listening to this song, and it was quite deserty. And it just had a very, very literal meaning to me. And it sure. had a gave me sort of a even more close contact to, to my horse and the environment that I was in and sort of made me look forward to getting on that horse in the morning and mm -hmm. spending the day and hoping, because it was all radio, hoping that that song might play. And as a child, I guess, I never really, even through today, because of that imprint on my mind and the value of those lyrics, I never thought about the actual other meaning of horse. But I do always remember thinking, even as a kid, why would you not name your horse? That right. doesn't make sense. <laughs> and so I also imagined a little bit about what I might name the horse, and I don't have a recall of right. what they were. I just remember thinking about that after the song. But, yeah, yeah um, give us the societal well, breakdown and well, your... For me, Take. it was a, another one of those songs that I listened to. I think it was released in the er, early 70s, like 71 or two or something. And so as a little kid and early teenager and everything, I, I heard this song a million times. Never thought, never gave it a thought. You know, I was a kid, uh, young. I just thought it was a cool tune. And uh, then it was w one of those songs that as you get older and you hear stuff and you read about it and what have you, um, it was a long time. I was well into my adulthood when I discovered that the horse that is another reference to heroin right. and there's lots of songs with horse references that that's referring to heroin and drug and i i look so i don't know but when i heard about all that it kind of made me think that this song was about a kid or a got somebody you know just kind of on a little trip sure. and not really doing anything but just Im imagining all of this stuff because they're high they're under the influence and the song something. is I don't know. such a mellow sort of easygoing yeah, lyrical cool. sort of sense and exactly. now in that reference you can imagine maybe laying there maybe the grass because it's in the desert but you know laying in the grass and imagining just closing your eyes and letting this trip take you where it will and sort of feeling your environment yeah that so makes sense it and could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people and that's another cool thing about the music but i i really don't know i just and, always loved this song when i was younger and, and the chorus so. is literally la 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 <laughs> just, Woo! Just, la 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 Woo! yeah it's, and, a, it's a good one but here's a, there's a lyric that i absolutely love in it and, it, and it's it, it's sort of um plays against each other but together at the same time the ocean is a desert with its life underground and a perfect disguise above well if you think about the ocean all of its life is under the surface sure. of or the vast majority of it mm -hmm. and it is like a desert the vast majority of life is the sandy floor underground and yeah, yeah all the insects and reptiles and things that live underground and maybe come out at night but um, anyway, that was just a lyric that I, I really loved, and um, someday I'm going to name that horse. Yeah, <laughs> it should be called, well, yeah, that's, that'd be a good one. We know another horse that's actually named Jim. That yes. Was, that was a good name for a horse, and, and you, you, your name may have probably had some... Yeah, that's interesting. Reach back that's to that horse. <laughs> you know, that, Jim is a good name for a horse. It is a great name for a horse. I'll throw and that one in the hat. My, for your, my greatest. My submission. 
I love the fact that I'm probably named after a horse. That gives me way more respect than being named after some dude. Right, right. It really does. Because <laughs> my love and affinity for horses. So, uh, well, I should probably clarify that real quick. My great great grandmother homesteaded in Poplar, Montana. And she was frequently behind a team of horses working, and her favorite horse was named Jim. So her firstborn son, she named Jim. And so no one knows where Jim came from for sure, but I'm quite certain it's the horse because there was no other Jim in the family. And uh, so I was named after my grandfather, so I was probably named after a giant Belgian workhorse, which right, to right. me is really cool. <laughs> awesome. So maybe we'll call that horse Jim from now on, yeah, huh? Maybe. All right, where are we going here? We got uh, coming up next is we have Eden. Eden coming up. Eden by Amanda Platt and the Honeycutter.